Mama Grassa Michelle, Mama Winnie Matigizela Mandela, and the entire Mandela family. And our team, Bubonke. His Excellency, Hail Mariam de Salen, the chairperson of the African Union and Prime Minister of Ethiopia. His Excellency, Dr. Joyce Banda, chairperson of SADC and the President of the Republic of Malawi. <laughs> Your Excellency, President Jakaya Kikwete, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Deputy President Kalima Monsante and Vice Presidents present here, former President Thabo Mbeki and all former heads of state and government, ministers, deputy ministers, and all representatives of governments, the diplomatic corps, the leadership of the ANC, South African Communist Party, COSATU and SANCO, leaders of fraternal political organizations and friends of South Africa, religious leaders, traditional leaders, compatriots and friends, today, marks the end of an extraordinary journey that began 95 years ago. It is the end of 95 glorious years of a freedom fighter, a dedicated and humble servant of the people of South Africa, a fountain of wisdom a pillar of strength and a beacon of hope to all those fighting for a just and equitable world order. We are truly honored to be part of the final journey of this great son of our country and the founding president of a free and democratic South Africa. Is it Twalandwe Siapalangwe Nelson Holisata Mandela? Dada, it has been a long, painful week for us, your people, your comrades, your relatives, your friends, since you took your last breath on the 5th of December, 2013. When you became critically ill last year, we were gripped with fear and anxiety. We did not want to confront the reality of your mortality. Over the past nine days of mourning, people have expressed their grief in various ways. What truly stands out is the spectacular display of admiration by the thousands who descended upon the Union buildings in Pretoria to spend just one moment with you 
as you lay in state, as you observed the long, patient queues lining the streets to the union buildings, some silent, some singing, many crying, we asked ourselves, what is it about this man that elicits this outpouring of sincere emotions? The answer is that when people see goodness in a person, they respond by reflecting goodness back at that person. and on their fellow men and women. We wish today to express two simple words. Thank you. Thank you for being everything we wanted and needed in a leader during a difficult period in our lives. Siabule and Ghost. Whilst your long walk to freedom has ended in the physical sense, our own journey continues. We have to continue building the type of society you worked tirelessly to construct. We have to take your legacy forward. In doing so, we'll continue drawing lessons from your very rich and extraordinary life. We'll always remember you as a man of integrity who embodied the values and principles that your organization, the ANC, promotes. These are unity, selflessness, sacrifice, collective leadership, humility, honesty, discipline, hard work, and mutual respect. We'll promote these values and practice them in order to build the type of society you wanted. That society is outlined in the ideals you espoused, the ideals you lived for, and which you were prepared to die for. These ideals defined your organization, the ANC. You summarize them in your timeless statement in court in 1964 and the statement that is well known, almost becoming like a verse in the Bible because of, of its profoundness. When democracy was ushered in on the 27th of April, 1994, you set out to build this ideal society. You actively promoted the achievement of a united, democratic, non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous South Africa. You taught us to embrace one another as compatriots, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, or creed. You did this because you hated racism. In your first court statement in October 1962, where you objected to being a black man in a white man's court, being tried by a white court, which was enforcing laws you had had no hand in making. We had also spoke out strongly against racism. You said, and I quote, 
I hate race discrimination most intensely and in all its manifestations. I fought it all during my life. I fight it now. I will do so until the end of my life." Unquote. We pledge today to continue promoting non-racialism and tolerance in our country and to build a South Africa that truly belongs to all. We also cherish the lessons you taught us of the importance of reconciliation, forgiveness, and compassion. We forgave those who had taken away, we had taken you away, and the most of your adult life, and who had dehumanized the majority of your compatriots. We learned from you that to build a new society, a new South Africa, from the ashes of apartheid colonialism, we needed to rise above anger and the human desire for retribution. In this way, you offered hope in the place of hopelessness. That uh, you did not only believe in anger, in, in, in gender equality, you practiced it. Gender equality gained prominence and seriousness under your presidency, leading to an increase in the numbers of women in public, in public office, especially in parliament and cabinet. We dare not reverse your achievements in this regard. Yem Yem, as your journey ends today, ours must continue in earnest. One thing we can assure you of today, Tata, as you take your final steps, is that South Africa will continue to rise. The abiding revolutionary spirit will prevail on us to not rest until the poor and the working class have truly benefited from the material fruits of freedom and democracy which you fought for. Therefore, today, we undertake to, to take forward the promotion of an improved quality of life for all. We commit to work more intensively to deal a decisive blow against the persisting poverty, unemployment, and inequality. We pledge to take your vision forward for good schools and hospitals, quality housing and utilities, decent jobs and working conditions, as well as efficient and accountable public service. Learning from your good self will continue to use education as a weapon to improve the quality of life and bring about change and to invest in the development of children and the youth. You loved children dearly. 
Therefore, in your memory, South African children must grow up in a country that is not only politically free, but which is also free and safe from violence, free and safe from crime, free and safe from poverty, ignorance, and disease, free and safe from indignity. That is the type of country we are building. In doing all this and more, we will be able to complete this country's transformation into the global force for social and economic leadership that we believed we were capable of being. Indeed, South Africa will continue to rise because we dare not fail you. The children of the accomplished strategic thinker and consummate man of action that you were must succeed and will succeed to build the South Africa of your dreams. Dada, as you are triumphant journey comes to an end, we sincerely thank you for dedicating your life to building a free and democratic South Africa in which all shall live in equality and dignity. We sincerely thank you, thank your family for sharing you with us and the world. We acknowledge the suffering of your own children who had an absent father and a father who was called a dangerous man and a terrorist by the apartheid regime and its surrogates. They are, no doubt, truly proud today to have been brought to this planet by a man so great and yet so humble. We thank your late former wife, Mama Evelyn Masse, who raised your children under difficult conditions while you spent time in prison. We acknowledge Comrade Winnie Matigizela Mandela, who kept your name alive and provided support and strength throughout the difficult years. When the ANC was banned, she refused to be silenced and carried on and carried on the struggle with amazing bravery. She was persecuted severely for standing by you and for remaining resolute in the pursuit of a free, democratic, non-racial, non-sexist, and united South Africa. We are proud of the contribution that she has made to the struggle for the liberation of our country as an activist and leader in her own name and right. We thank your dear wife, Mama Grasa Masher, who has been at your side providing love, strength, and companion the past year has not been easy for her. During your ill health, she ensured your care and comfort until the final moment.
given Mama Krasa's own passion for children's rights and well-being, the two of you made a formidable pair for the benefit of children. We acknowledge your impressive grandchildren who have matured in a way beyond their age because of the type of family they have been born into. We acknowledge their own children who also have given valuable support to you as a father and made you feel comfortable. Many have looked after you over the years, providing support and love and doing many things that would have made you proud. In many of them, we see you. We thank Abatembo, Amadlo, Onke for being the pillar you needed in undertaking tasks of building this great country. Shibulela Nabantu Abake Apa Eku. who have always remained a source of inspiration to you. We extend our deep felt condolences to our organization, the ANC, as well as COSATU, the South African Communist Party, and the South African National Civic Organization, for whom your departure is a monumental loss. We thank the ANC in particular for providing the space for you to lead us to freedom and to influence humanity. Our thoughts are with the community of Kun and surroundings who have lost their famous son. We extend our condolences to the entire South African nation whose pain we share deeply as a government whose foundation you laid in 1994. Our hearts go out to all your friends who have each lost a part of themselves in your passing. From George Bezos to Ahmed Katrada, Andrew Langeni, and other stalwarts, we feel their pain. When bidding you farewell, we also remember how fortunate we have been for our country to have produced leaders of your caliber. Through you, we salute Oliver Regional Tambo Walter Sisulu, Coven Beggy, Elias Mutsualeti, Raymond Saba, Moses Kotan, Stephen Lamini, Helen Joseph, Lillian Goy, Dorothy Nyembe, Joe Slovo, Bram Fisher, and many others who have shared the moments of struggle with you. We owe it to them and to countless South Africans and foreign nationals who died in pursuit of our struggle. To take your vision of a better life for all forward. We acknowledge your medical team who worked round the clock managing your health. They are an amazing team of medical professionals. We thank your personal support staff 
from protectors to household and administration, all of whom are going through a lot of pain since we have departed. Tata, you were an internationalist, which is why Africa and the world descended on this country to bid you farewell. We will continue to contribute to building a better Africa and a better and more just and equitable world order. We thank Africa and the world again for the solidarity and support since you are passing. Matiba, Yem Yem, we will miss your smile, your laughter, your love, and your leadership. We will cherish every moment we spend with you. You are indeed an extraordinary human being. You will remain our guiding light, illuminating the path as we continue the long journey to build the South Africa of your dreams. We shall not say goodbye for you are not gone. You will live forever in our hearts and minds. Hambaga Shamatiba, Yem Yem, Zondwa, Golom Seal, Velabem Pensel, Sopisho, Hambaga Gutle. Kokala Makoka, Hambaga Se Kawala Makaw, Samaya Hantle, Sinatla Sasnash. Thank you very much.